What is going on, guys? Welcome back to the... Ooh. Ooh. Okay, so the lens is cleaned off. Now we can get into it. Uh, welcome back to the shop. Today I am back with you with the Fokker, the giant bumblebee on the bench. And I got a couple of updates I wanna show you. And they're kind of the unnecessary details that I thought, you know what, I can do that. And the other one, well, anyway, the first one I wanna show you is the prop. Now. I'll, 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 put, I'll cut in a picture here of what it looked like before. Now, this particular detail is something that I thought about. I was like, you know what? The nose just doesn't look right. It looks a little naked. It doesn't look finished. And so I drew up this uh, plastic ring here that is essentially a giant plastic washer that fits behind the metal washers. Now, uh, some of the the paint has rubbed off from you know uninstalling and reinstalling the the prop nut here so i can go back and try to touch that up a little bit but basically what we've got is a piece of plastic behind a piece of metal and uh, this is all 3d printed i uh, printed it in abs smoothed it out with acetone prime paint and then after that i drilled really tiny holes okay so how do you drill one of these tiny holes? Well, let me tell you, really cool device. Uh, it's called a drill, <laughs> but it's a different kind of drill. And let me show you what I mean. This is called a pin vise. Okay, so uh, a, a pin vise is basically a handheld drill, but you have really, really tiny, tiny drill bits that you can use. Let, let, me, let me get these out real quick and I'll show you. All right, so these are the tiny set of bits. So here you can see that, yeah, I broke a few. I broke a few bits in the process of doing this, but here's pretty big. And then this is like, like uh, it's thinner than a piece of hair. I can't even get it to focus. It's so tiny. But anyway, like using these drill bits, I can drill through the side through the plastic. Now, in reality, I could have probably used like a needle and, and heated it up and melted it. I didn't know how delicate that was gonna be and I had the pin vise anyway, so I thought, eh, it's a good idea to show you what a pin vise is. So that's what I did. I, uh, I drilled through all the way and then this is thread. If you look really close, thread. All the way through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I dig, dinged it here already, but that's okay. Um, so that's that thread is silver thread, and it's just run through, and then somewhere, let me see if I can find it. I can't even find it anymore. Uh, there, I think, I think is where I put the knot. It's super, super tiny. Um, but yeah, that's where I've got the knot, but all of this is just one piece of thread. And so this looks like safety wire, which is totally cool. It dresses up the front end and it fills in the blank space that was kind of bugging me. So <laughs> there you go. Um, really quite simple. It took me about a little less than five minutes to drop in Fusion 360. And the print itself, because I printed on really high resolution, took about 40 minutes to print. And then acetone was like five minutes because I brushed it on uh, with a brush, not a huge deal. And then uh, a layer of primer, let that cure for about an hour. And then essentially hot or wet apply the, uh, the metallic paint after that and let it cure for a couple of hours. Super, super easy to do and a great detail to do as well. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the next thing. The next thing on this fun little project here, it, you cannot see, you cannot see, but um, over here, I've got my handy little transmitter thing that I love so very much. And it's probably gonna start acting up if it gets too close to the airplane. Um, but I've got a little switch here. 
All right, so what I've done is, all right, so I added a gun sound and I've got one other sound. Cool, so I've got, yeah, one little burst of rounds and then I've got a longer series of bursts of rounds so that I can simulate that in the air. Now, this is an off the shelf generic brand. It's from Sense Innovations or Sense Hobbies or something like that. Got it off of Banggood. I actually used it on the P47, but I really didn't much care for it on the P47. So I ended up just taking it out. Um, it didn't. It, ju it just didn't really fit the P47 in terms of the quality and the fit and finish there. Um, maybe I'll revisit sound in the P47 someday, but today is not that day. Anyway, with this uh, particular module, uh, you can upload custom sounds. So uh, I used sounds that I found on the internet of the MK08 machine guns. So let me power this off and I'll open up the hatch on the bottom and try to show you guys inside and see what we're looking at. All right, so from this angle, you can see most everything that's going on here. We've got a battery strap that's a, a little bit in the way. Let me tuck that out a little bit out of your way so you can see what's going on. So this is the unit itself. I've got capability to hook up to two different speakers and I'm currently only one. Here's another connection. Um, actually, one of the, the transdu these are called transducers, and one of them that I took off the P47 was broken. Um, over here, yeah, it's over here. So it broke because these little tabs end, are, are act like spring steel. And yeah, that one broke. And there was another one that broke. Yeah, that one broke too. So the whole thing seized up. That's garbage. Anyway, it's plenty loud enough. Um, so the transducer just uh, you use like automotive double sided strong tape and it sticks right onto the foam. These things are designed to go on to foam anyway. I tried messing around with balsa and it's OK. It's OK. Uh, regardless, so there's the one side that goes to transducers and then there's a uh, supply side. So you've got uh, power here and that just goes to a three cell pack. Now, part of the reason why I thought I'm making functional weight anyway. So I was using an additional 3S2200 stuck here on the Velcro just for a little added ballast after I painted. So it makes sense to make that a little more functional anyway, adds a little bit more weight up front too. And then the signal wire just goes straight into the receiver and that's just a programming exercise. So it's really not hard stuff. It's just, you know, being careful, make sure the wires are set right and going through the process of setting up the radio and making sound files, processing that in Audacity. Uh, there are plenty of tutorials online about using Audacity and you can make like little short clips of, of guns or other sounds, uh, even like, you know, the, the, the siren kinds of sounds, whoosh sounds from airplanes. Um, there are all sorts of different sounds you could probably upload to this thing, but you can only upload like sound clips. You can't upload custom engine sounds. So I tried, I tried again, <laughs> can't do it. So um, aside from having like a completely non uh, period correct engine sound, <laughs> It just, I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to delete this. I'm not even going to try to have an engine sound on this anyway. Kind of the novelty of having a quarter scale foamy is not having a gas engine anyway. So uh, that's my thinking anyway. Kind of a fun thing. Um, not necessarily for everyone. Got a little bit of dust in my eye. But uh, let me put this down, make this safe, because I'm, I'm just about, you know, I'm, I'm touching the ceiling here. <laughs> All right, guys, that'll do it for this time. Thanks again for stopping by the shop. I really hope you got something out of this, that you learned something, maybe got something that you could share with somebody else. It's a really cool hobby that we can share with other people and really express ourselves in these models. It's really, really kind of cool. Um, but until next time, guys, keep working on your flying foamy works of art.